What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today is going to be a pretty short video as well. Um, don't have a whole lot going on, but what we have to do is we have to do some maintenance to the truck. Um, but before we can do some maintenance and get some things cleaned up, we're going to have to uh, run a couple errands. So, so I need to grab my drain pan, which is oh so conveniently buried down there. So I'm going to grab my drain pan. We got to run to either O'Reilly's or AutoZone or somewhere that takes oil that we can dump that because that is a 16 quart pan. It has about 18 quarts in it from when I did uh, my oil change and then my brakes blew up. So get that in there and then also got to stop by the you know gas station get me a little Monster Energy drink or something. I'm tired. And then I think on top of uh, doing some oil changes and taking care of the truck and everything that we need to do, we're going to top off all fluids. And then I, we we're uh, probably going to give it a bath and maybe deep clean the engine bay or something. So, all right, well, let's go get a cold start for the boys. We can uh, get some heat in the motor and then be off here in about 10 minutes. Stop on the racetrack. Gotta get me a uh, Monster Energy drink. Let's get it. All right. I need to know something down in the comments because this seems to be a popular opinion. Every time that I go to AutoZone, I hate my experience. I hate it. The people that work there, is the way that people talk to you. I freaking hate it so much. But it's always such a pain in the ass to go to O'Reilly's because it's like seven more miles down the road out of the way and this is the first one especially when you just need to dump oil man let me know down in the comments if you guys feel the same way there is i'd rather go to advanced auto jeez autos don't just sucks man all right let me just pull back into the house so now we gotta wait well i'm gonna wait because i don't really want to burn myself wait for the truck to cool down just a little bit and then uh we'll get to draining this oil and putting the new good stuff in it. All right, for those of you that don't know, this truck does have a bulletproof diesel air to oil cooler kit on it. I think it was an extra four quarts is what it adds in there. So collectively with the new filter, the new um, oil cooler and all the lines, it ta brings you up to about 16 quarts or 16.1 or two quarts. So this is, I use AMS oil products. I always have, I always will, I'm biased to it. Um, some people live and die by Schaefer, some people live and die by Rotella T6. Really, all of those things are perfectly fine for it. It's just what you have on hand and also what is known to work in 6.0s. So Anzoil is known to work in 6.0s as well, along with Schaefer's, Rotella, all of it. Everybody swears by OEM oil, so the Ford Motocraft brand oil, specially made for 6.0s. I've never used it. I've never wanted to use it. I had no need. So collectively, the truck takes about four gallons of oil. Just just a little bit over four gallons of oil. So that is what I have today. What I'm running on top of the AMS oil is uh, Arch Oil AR9100. It's a friction modifier. Everybody says, well not everybody, but some people say you do not need AR9100 when you use AMS oil products. To me, it doesn't hurt to do it. Um, Obviously, it's a Huey injection system, so every little additive that you have helps. And I don't use Signature Series. I use OE um, oil 
There's that regular heavy duty diesel synthetic, not the signature series of AMS oil. Number one, I think it's a waste of money because you have to change oil every 4,000 miles, 5,000 miles, whatever you guys want to change oil at. I change every three to 4,000 miles because the manual says every five to seven. And if I push it to five, I'll probably procrastinate and wait until seven, just like I procrastinated at 3,000 miles and I'm at 4,000 miles now. So that's what I use. Um, along with arch oil and then um, if you do have a bulletproof diesel air to oil cooler kit the Wix filter is a part number 51832 and it goes just under that side of the bumper when it's relocated so I have four gallons of AMS oil diesel oil I run 15w40 the manual calls for 15W40 when it is above 40 degrees for more than two weeks at a time. And obviously I'm in Florida, so it's always above 40 degrees, 99% of the time. And for those of you that don't know, with the Bulletproof kit, you do a oil filter relocation as well. It brings it to a bigger filter with better cleaning properties. And your where your oil filter would go normally, OEM wise, it's just empty. It's just sitting on top of a billet aluminum uh, oil transfer block. Well, that's draining. I also just noticed that my track bar is soaked in oil and I was trying to look up I don't know if you guys can see right up there I have a uh, front cover leak now so along with the bed plate leak behind the pan I also have a front cover leak let's see if we can get it looking Right behind that the crank pulley soaked so while that's draining out I'm gonna take a look into that and clean my hands cuz they're yucky all right so I'm waiting for the oil to finish draining out I'm going to get this rock guard this rock guard off because there's my oil filter right there so I got to get this um, bulletproof diesel supplied rock guard off of the uh, bumper and the frame and we we'll can pull that off in access to that filter right there so that one once the oil is done draining we can put the drain plug back in and work on the filter side let's get after it I don't know if you guys could see. Yes, this protects the oil filter, but I freaking hate it. The bolts suck, the bolt locations suck. It's so hard to get your hands in there and then the bolts get seized and it's... I wish I could run without it, but I can't, unfortunately. Too many rocks. Now that we got that off, we can go underneath, put the drain plug back in the car, and then we can get this oil filter off. Hopefully it's not a bitch and a half to get off. Let's let that drain out. So basically how this runs is the oil cooler's up front and there's a line going into the block. So with it draining like that, it's draining partial of the cooler so you can put obviously fresher oil in the cooler. The only problem with these trucks is they have a huge valley in the center and that's what feeds the high pressure oil pump. So every time you do an oil change, you can't get every single thing out, which sucks. But it works, I guess. Now we got that draining out. It's draining partial of the cooler. So we're gonna let that go. And then uh, we can throw the good good in it. And it does say on the new filter that this one, it does want it pre-filled. All right, you have to make sure that you have a good tight o-ring on here and then the o-ring on the old one um, is not stuck on the oil filter block 
Let's go ahead and grab a new, new gallon of oil. And let's get this bad boy filled up. Also make sure you leave, lube the O-ring really well. I use new oil, some people use used oil. I make sure that is lubed very well and I make sure that the filter block is clean. Do not over tighten these, they make them a bitch to get off and it'll just make your life hell in the long run. Or a half turn. That's it. She's done. Alright, new filters on, drain plug is installed. Let's go ahead and start filling up the oiling system. So like I said in uh, the beginning of this video, this with the bulletproof air to oil cooler kit, it takes 16 quarts which is equivalent to four gallons but as you see I just threw a little under half a gallon in just the uh, oil filter itself so now it really only takes three and a half gallons to fill up the pan and then once we prime the system we'll top it, keep topping it off to make sure everything on the dipstick is good because partial of the oil cooler drained out when you pulled the filter out and then all the lines also drained back through. So you have to refill the lines, which is probably gonna take a whole, like another quart or two on top of itself. Let's fill the truck up with some oil. We'll check the level, we'll prime it, um, using the wire on the passenger side on the battery to get the low pressure oil pump running to push all the fluid through, create oil pressure. And then once we create oil pressure, there should be no problems with a no start because you have a vat of oil still in your high pressure oiling system and once you start getting it all the way through the filter and pushing back up into the lines it's refilling that vat of oil if you prime your system well enough there will not be an issue of a no start and there will not be an issue of air in your oiling system so just take your time prime it five to six times make sure you have oil pressure keep checking your dipstick and make sure everything's good to go on that aspect also, it's just a general rule of thumb. With any vehicle, but especially a six liter, make sure your cleanliness is top tier. So after that first gallon, I like to add in my arch oil so, so that everything can mix properly especially when you go to fire the truck up it's not just pulling just arch oil it's pulling oil and then arch oil and everything is mixing perfectly always ensure that you shake your arch oil because you don't want just clumps of sediment coming out and so this arch oil will supplement just about a half a quart of oil so we'll leave it there will always be a little bit left over in the from your four gallons. From my experience, that arch oil is the best stuff for stiction. Everybody says hot shots is good too. I'm not saying it's not. I just never used it. Um, but everybody boasts about arch oil and how it makes everything just run so much smoother. So if you're if you're running into stiction issues with your injectors. Throw some arch oil in there, run it out, beat the hell out of it, and it will go away. I can almost guarantee you. So I'm going to stop at three and 
three quarters of a gallon and I'm going to check my level and then prime my system and check my level again and if it's a little low then we have some more to spare but that's usually the magic number for me and that should be hot on the money alright so I don't know if you can see Let's go focus it is reading just in between min and max Get a good light on it there we go it is reading just in between the min and max line so that's where I want to be when I want to prime my oil system to see if we need any more afterwards which we will we'll probably need just about a half a quart I'd say just to get it up above let's pull this funnel throw the cap on make sure it's clean prime the system and we'll go from there so basically how we're gonna prime the system is there is this little starter solenoid wire right here pop it off this guy and this is going to connect to the positive terminal of your battery and it's going to turn your truck over without starting it because your key is not in to make sure that the fuel pumps not running and all of that let's get it turning over and then we can build oil pressure so that we can check our level again And then you want to give it a break in between every time of cycling it so that your starter doesn't overheat and burn out. Okay, check our line one more time. Yeah. So now, if you can see, it's not even registering on the dipstick. So, time to add some oil. Let's check our level. Now we're reading on the dipstick. And there. Let's see if you can see. Now we're back up to just above halfway between the min and max almost to the max portion and once we prime it two more times it's going to drop down to the center perfect you can see that's perfect just below max line probably two hashes below max line that's right where we want it that's right where I like it because it gives me enough if it ever leaks I can get home I ain't gonna hurt it all right let's start the truck And as easy as that, the truck is started. I'm letting it run out um, so it can purge all the oil within the system, fill all the lines. Again, even though we primed the system, there's still pockets in there. Uh, we have 671 PSI of ICP pressure. And she sounds smooth. She is loving herself with a new oil change. But that is how you do an oil change on a six liter with a bulletproof air to oil cooler kit. 
and I hope it was informative to all of you guys and I appreciate every single one of you that stopped by to check out this video till the end. You guys are the main soul of this channel and I appreciate every single one of you. We're almost to 200 subscribers. We're at 161 right now, I believe. And that's massive. It's a huge milestone. Uh, it's all because of you guys, so I appreciate it. Let's try and get to 200 subscribers by the end of the... Let's try and get to 200 subscribers by the end of April. That would make me the happiest dude in the earth right now. So, thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll catch you in the next upload. See ya.